ring, Examiner. I believe that's our ring. I know his llama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lama and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, it's morning in Pine Ridge, and the town's oldest grocery and dry goods merchants, Lum Edwards and Abner Peabody, have just opened their Jotham Down store. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows concentrating on how to speed up business and to modernize their store. Listen. Oh, we just let our store business over here run down something wonderful, Abner. Well, Law, we can't make folks come in here and trade with us. No, but I believe if we concentrate, we can study up some ways to make them want to come in here. You do, huh? Yeah, we can at least get our old customers back. While we've been sleeping, Dick Huddleston's took all our customers away from us. Yeah, we can think up some way. Huh? I say we've got to get our old customers back. Yeah, but did you say Dick Huddleston's been getting them while we were sleeping? Why, sure, while we're not tending to business. Well, lied, doggies, if he's going to stay open at night, we will, too. Well, I don't mean he's... Well, stay... we keep the store open during the day, don't we? Of course we will. I'm talking about... Well, uh, it. when are we going to sleep, Long? If you'll shut up a minute, I'll explain it to you. I know what you mean. You want to keep the store open day and night. But I say we got to get some sleep sometime. I don't mean for us to keep the store open of a night. Well, we've got just as much right to do it as that Dick Huddleston. Well, Dick ain't keeping his store open of a night. Well, you said he was. I never done no such a thing. I said while we've been sleeping, Dick Huddleston's been taking our business away from us. Well, that's the only time I've been sleeping is of a night. Oh, well, once in a while I sit back here and sort of doze off for a few minutes. Just little old cat naps, but not long enough for him to get none of our customers. Of course not. That ain't what I mean. I don't ta- care what he says, Lum. That's just about when he's doing it is of a night. Abner, Dick Huddleston don't keep his store open of a night, so just forget about it. Well, how's he getting all that business in? Well, he don't have to keep his store open at night to get business. What? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I see now. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Well, I'm glad you got it through that thick head of yours. <laughs> I don't know why. I never understood it to start with. I don't neither. He don't keep his store open, but he goes around taking orders of a night, huh? I doggy, that's a good idea. Get a feller out of bed while he'll promise to buy anything just so as he can go back to sleep. For goodness sake. Doggy, I believe I'll call up a few of them tonight. Pick out some of them sleepy-headed ones like old Uncle Henry Lonsford. I'll just go over about 12 o'clock tonight. Tell him if he don't give me an order for some groceries, I'm going to sit right there and pester him till daylight. Abner, will you listen to me a minute? Yeah, I'll listen. Now, just don't say a word till I get done. Oh. When I said Dick Huddleston has been taking our customers while we're sleeping, I don't mean the kind of sleeping you're thinking about, in bed with your eyes shut. Well, how are you going to sleep without shutting your eyes? I said be quiet till I get done explaining this to you. Go ahead. Now, when I say sleep, I mean sitting around the store here and not going after new business. We've just always took our customers for granted, it's sort of. We have, huh? Why, sure. A body's got to improve their salesmanship. Get a new slant on selling methods. Learn how to wait on folks. Well, I know how to wait on them. Oh, yeah, you can get the stuff down out of the shelves and hand it to them. Well, what are you supposed to do? Let them get it? No, but there's newer ways of doing it. I know that. Well, I'd like to know what they are. Either let them get it or get it firm. The stuff ain't going to jump down out of the shelves long. How would a can of tomatoes know when somebody wanted it? Well, I seen a book advertised in a magazine the other day. It says it'll learn you all about how to sell stuff. Modern salesmanships. Well. And I told the mail carrier to stop in there at the bookstore at the county seat this morning and see if they had one. Well, good. I'd just love to see what other ways they figured out to get that stuff down out of the shelves. Well, that ain't all he is to selling stuff, Abner, just getting it down out of the shelves. This book will show us how to talk to customers and try to talk them into buying stuff and how to get new customers and junk like that. Well, here's the advertisement. I clipped it out of the magazine. Oh, oh. It says, uh, Mr. Salesman, are you satisfied with average results? Read our book of modern salesmanship and double your earnings. Be the man who builds the better mousetrap. Learn the scientific uh, Lom, way to... Lom, sa- what was that about mousetraps? 
Oh, it says, be the man who builds the better mousetrap. Well, there ain't no money in building your own mousetraps here in Pine Ridge, Long. Might sell a few, but no, oh, might not everybody around here has got a cat. Oh, well, they don't mean it that way. It's just an expression. I've heard it a thousand times. Fact is, I think it's an old lettered saying of mine. Build a better mousetrap and the world will beat a path to your door. I've always Hell, said that. Well, don't believe you'll make any money out of it. That please. means if we can build a better mousetrap, we can get customers in the store here. I don't believe you're going to get no customers that way. What way? By trapping them. Trapping them? Well, you might get a few. I believe now I can set one that cracker barrel and catch old Grandpappy Spears. He's always reaching his arm down in there. But them mouse traps ain't going to hold them long. What we need is a big steel trap, a bear trap. Put it right there in the front door. Cover it up right good with leaves. That'll get them. <laughs> Just tell them we won't turn them loose till they give us an order. You think a feller give you an order after you delivered caught him in a bear trap? Oh, they'd promise anything to get out of there long. Them things hurt. Might not take the foot off of them. Well, of course they would. But that's better than them little old pesky mouse traps. Why, they never would hold them on. Just aggravate them. All they do, they'll drag them off. They ain't talking about setting no traps for nobody. Oh, I thought that up myself, huh? <laughs> you must have. Well, good for me. I <laughs> doggies. I'm improving on the book and ain't even read it. But now, Long, I believe if we run a whole line of traps clean across the street, we'd do better. Get some of them folks that's going by, heading for Dick Huddleston's store. Abner, we ain't going to set no steel traps. Oh. Well, now, there's, there's another kind of trap that the Indians used to use. Might work. You take a rope and tie it to the top of a little tree, sort of sapling, and then you bend the tree down and put a loop in the other end of the rope, and then when they step through that loop, that sapling flips back up and leaves them hanging there by one foot head downwards. That's the ridiculous thing I ever heard of. I know it. I'd love to catch old Grandpa Masters in one of them. <laughs> I bound you, he'd scream like a panther. Well, we ain't going to set no traps for nobody. Just forget about the traps and let me finish this advertisement. Go ahead. Let's see, where was I at here? Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Literally thousands of salesmen who have read this book have doubled or tripled their earnings almost overnight. Well, I do know just with them little mouse traps. It's just hard to believe. Ernest DeWitt of Clinton, Iowa, writes. Who? Uh, Ernest DeWitt. Oh, must be old Frank DeWitt's boy. After studying your book on selling and putting your plan into action, I increased my sales 72% in two days. Old Frank uh, had three girls and one boy, but I never recollected his name being Ernest. They always called him Pee Wee. Pee Wee DeWitt. He's a little bitty skinny young un, taking pioneer her lessons. What are you talking about? Pee Wee DeWitt. Don't you recollect when they lived here long? Do you it? want to hear the rest of this letter or not? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Proud to hear little Pee Wee's doing so well. Proud to hear it. Thanks to your wonderful book, I have now been promoted to sales manager of my district, which takes in almost all of the residential section of Clinton. I bound you his mama's awful disappointed in him, old. After spending all that money to give him pioneer -er lessons for him to wind up selling mousetraps. Abner, if you say mousetraps one more time, I'm going to whop you right on top of the head. Granny, you get something in your mind, run a feller stark raving mad crazy. Well, you was the one that started it, reading about the mousetraps. I told you not to say mousetraps no more. Oh, well, can I eat? All right, all right. Where was I at? Right there. My company has even made me a member of their Go-Getters Club and have given me a button to wear in my coat lapel. Good for Pee-wee. I owe this all to you. Sincerely yours, Ernest D. Witt, Clinton Iowa. Well, sir, I just can't hardly imagine that young and growed up. He was an awful crybaby. I recollect he got up down at the school closing exercises to play the piano and forgot his piece. Cry that kid ball, lay down and kick the floor, just throw the transom right there. That was our ring, wasn't it? Oh, oh yes, yeah, that blame telephone's a nuisance. Ought to have the thing took out of here. Well, go on, answer it. Oh, for goodness sake. Hello, who is it and what do you want? Who? A uh, what? Ain't got it. Get it down at Dick Huddleston's store. That's a fine way to answer the phone. Huh? That's exactly what I've been talking about. 
sending our customers down to Dick Huddleston's store. Who was it? Mamie Phillips. I bound you, you told her we was out of something just because you're too lazy to take it over there. No, sir, we ain't got none. What did she want? Oh, she wanted nothing. Nothing? What did she want? What? What, you won't be mad at me if I tell you, will you? Of course I won't be mad. I want to know. What did she want? Uh... Tell me, go on. Mousetrap. I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lama Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the book on salesmanship, which Lum sent for in an effort to pep up the sales at their jot him down store, arrived today. And as we look in on the little community now, we find the old fellows down at their store, eagerly unwrapping the new volume. Listen. Well, hurry up and unwrap it, Mom. I'm just busting to hear what it says. Oh, this is the best idea I've ever had yet, Ed. Well, <laughs> well, they charged it two dollars for it, but I, Grannies, I believe it's going to be worth it. Doggies, them things does come high, don't they? Hey, grannies, look at that. Ain't that a dandy? For uh, the land sake. <laughs> Magic salesmanship. Sixty secrets of sales success. Secrets? My dog is there. Something I just love is any kind of a secret. Oh, you'll sure make Pine Ridge set up and take notice now. We <laughs> will. Yeah, all we got to do is read this book, and we'll increase our sales seventy-two percent in three days. Seventy-two percent. That's what the advertisement said. Imagine selling seventy-two times as much stuff as we've been selling. Well, we ain't got 72 times as much stuff here to sell, old Lum. Then is, maybe we better sit down and order a batch of stuff before we even read the book. No use to learn all these new ideas if we ain't got the merchandise to sell folks after they come in. My dog is, if we do 72 times as much business as we've been doing, they're going to keep us hopping around here, you know it. Oh, we'll be going in a dead run from morning till night. Won't have time for no more checker playing or visiting with folks. Well, Lum... Couldn't we just read about half the book and then just do half as much new business? Well, we can get some extra clerks in here if we need them. I hate to start a book and stop and not find out how it comes out. Yeah, well, go ahead and read it, Lon. We can order the stuff from the wholesale house after a while. Yeah, we're going to have to make room for it in here, too. Stuff we've been buying a case at a time, like tomatoes and hominy, have to order them 72 cases at a time. For the land's sake. Oh, this is going to be just like a beehive in here. That's right, I feel sorry for Dick Huddleston over there in his store, running it using old-timey methods. Poor fella. He's such a nice fella, I'm a good mind to loan him the book again we get done reading it. Well, now, let's don't do it for a few days long. Wait till we get our business going good first. Another thing, we'd be making 72 times as much money, too. Had you thought about that? We will. Why, sure. Just for $2, that's all the book cost. Right there's the best invest we ever made in our lives, haven't we? Yeah. Well, hurry up, read it. I'm just busting to hear them secrets. Secrets? Well, you said there were 60 secrets in there. Oh, it says 60 secrets to sales success. Well, good. I know that that's going to be hard to keep all of them, old Lum. That's a lot of secrets, 60 of them. Let's see here. I don't know whether to start at the first or jump around, sort of. Why just start out and read it from kiver to kiver? Well, the only thing, some customer might come in here before we get done reading the whole book, and by skipping around, sort of, we might have one or two ideas we could use on them before we even read the rest of it. Uh-huh. Let's see here. This sounds interesting right here. What's that? The key to successful salesmanship lies in the four fundamental steps in selling. Lies in what? The four steps to sell stuff. Well, what if they want a sack of flour or something out of the feed room? Well, it works the same way, regardless of what they want. Well, they're going to have to be awful long ones if I get back there in four steps. Like I said, I don't believe I can do it without taking a run at it long. Well, it don't mean actual steps, Abner. 
Oh, it's all right to jump on. No, means they're fixing to tell us four ways of selling stuff. I'll read it here. Number one, the approach, or getting the customer's attention. Approach? Yeah, when a customer comes in, how you walk up to him. Well, some of them walks right up to you, though, Ron. If you taken four steps, why, you'd walk right over them. Of course, you could take four steps backwards, I reckon. That's what they mean. I told you it don't mean footsteps. Well, jumping at them, you might scare them too long. If you just hash up a minute let me finish reading this, you'll understand what they mean without me trying to explain it. Go ahead, go ahead. Contrary to general opinion, this step is as important in retail stores as it is in door-to-door or office selling. Ah, we said write them books in little bitty words so nobody could understand them. Your approach should accomplish several things. A. The customer should be made to feel welcome and should be greeted with a genial smile. A cheery greeting, a happy smile, and a slap on the back is never wasted time. Well, now, what does that mean, Lon? Well, somebody comes in the store here instead of just sitting there and asking them what they want. You're supposed to jump up and greet them with a smile. Good morning, Caleb, old boy. What can I do for you? You're looking uncommonly fine today. Morning, Caleb. Er, where? Well, he ain't coming in. I'm just using him for example. Oh. That's the way we ought to greet him. Well, what are we being so nice to Caleb for all of a sudden? Well, we ought to greet everybody that way. Oh, go ahead. B. Flattery is one of the world's greatest weapons. Every individual is flattered at your interest in his or her welfare. Well, now, uh, break that up for me, Mom. Well, anybody knows that pleases them when you ask them about their family and how the new baby is their house and all that stuff. Well, I just sort of hate to pass compliments right in the body's face, you might say. Here's an example here. It says, for example, I overheard a clerk say to a lady customer, Good morning, Miss Blank. I'm glad you drooped in, or dropped in. Who's Miss Blank? I don't know, Abner. What difference does it make? Must be that woman from Texas that's best in the sea skunks. This is just an example. Good morning, Miss Blank. I'm glad you dropped in. We have some new perfume that's just made for you. Miss Blank is naturally flattered at the clerk's personal interest, and even though she did not expect to buy perfume, she will invariably want to see it, and in most cases leaves the store with a bottle of the perfume that was just made for her. Uh, now, uh... Right them up and shoot again, Mom. I must have jumped the track there on you, Summers. Well, they're just explaining how to compliment people into buying stuff. Makes a customer think you had them in mind when you ordered the stuff from the wholesale house. Natural air, pleased and flattered. Well, we ain't got no perfume here, though. Well, no, we got some other things. Well, that ain't gonna sound right, though, Mom. Some woman come in here and... You say we got a can of sauerkraut back there. It looks just like you. And Pat, as Mamie Phillips is, I wouldn't dare tell her we had a wash tub back there that looked like her. Well, you want to try to pass compliments on people, Abner. you got to pick out articles that are pretty. Well, I'll try. Try anything once, I've always said. Well, if we'll read this book carefully, it won't be long before it'll start showing results. It knows what it's talking about, all right. I can tell that already. It will read some more. Yeah, where was I at? Here, here. The second step, service. In the modern stores of today, service is the watchword. This is a vague term covering a multitude of points which... Well, you know, it's not Grandpappy it. Spears, Mom. Grandpappy. Better not let him hear any of them secrets. He'll tell everybody in town. All right, Granny, this is a good time to try out some of this stuff. I tell you, I'll let you wait on him, and after he leaves, I'll tell you the things you've done wrong. I'll look at the book. Oh, he don't want nothing, just loafing. More likely wants to banner me for a game of checkers. Well, now, that's the trouble. You just take it for granted that he don't want nothing. thing to do is to sell him something. We always let him come in here and wait on himself, and never offer to get up and help him. About all we do is just put it down on the books whenever he leaves. Well, I'll try what you've been reading there if you want me to. And don't forget, cheerful greeting, smile, flattery, and what was that other service? Yeah, be quiet. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yeah. Morning, Grandpa. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. How are you fellas this morning? 
one, two, three, four steps. Well, morning, Grandpa. Oh, boy, proud to see you, kid. Hey, 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 you. hey, what's going on here? Who do you think you're hitting anyway there? I wasn't hitting you. I was just slapping you on the back, greeting you. Well, cut it out. Right now, knock the breath out of me. Wait a minute. What you stand there grinning like a Chessie cat for? I'm just smiling at you because I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I thought maybe I had my suspenders hooked up wrong again. We got some hair ribbon back there that looks just like you, Grandpa. Hair ribbon? Well, that's pretty. Go ahead. What do you mean hair ribbon looks like me? Well, I just thought maybe you'd like to buy it. What in the name of goodness would I do with hair ribbon? Oh, I'll, uh, how's the new baby at your house? What new baby? I don't know. What, what one, Lom? Ask him what you can do for him. Oh, yeah. Uh, what can we do for you, Grandpa? Oh, I just want a can of harmony and a box of soda crackers. I'll get them. No, I right hear I'll get them for you now. Well, I know where they're at. I ain't crippled. No, no, we ain't going to let you wait on yourself down here no more. Well, wait a minute here. What's come over you fellas all of a sudden? Don't trust me behind the counter, huh? Feared I'll steal something. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll just go down to Dick Huddleston's store to do my trading. He'll trust me behind his counter. Well, now, wait a minute, Grandpa. Never, never mind apologizing. I know the minute I come in here, something was wrong. I wouldn't do business with you fellas if this was the last door on this earth. Well, I do know. 72 percent, huh? Let me look at that book again. <laughs> Granny, Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, Storm. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum is still trying to bring the sales method of their jot them down store up to date by studying the book they recently purchased on modern salesmanship. However, He's having a difficult time trying to teach Abner the underlying principles. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows down at their jot em down store discussing the results of their efforts. Listen. Yeah, Granny's, I can't understand it, Abner. We've had this book for two days now, and our business ain't increased a bit. Well, that advertisement said that feller in Clinton, Iowa, increased his business 72% in two days long. I know it, I know it. And if anything, our business has fallen off. You ain't been reading that book backwards, have you? <laughs> of course not. Maybe we ain't given enough time yet, Abner. One thing, we ain't had enough customers to work it on. Well, I've been trying out that cheery greeting and all that on everybody that comes in. But they all start backing off like they're suspicious of me. Well, I believe you've been overdoing that, Abner. Like yesterday when you greeted Mamie Seastrength whenever she come in here. Slapped her on the back hard enough to might not knock the breath out of her. I don't think we ought to slap women folks on the back when you greet them. Well, that book said customers. Never said what time. Well, I think that's carrying things too far, though. I believe by the time we get through reading the whole book, our sales will start picking up. Well, that tells you so many things to do in there. I just can't recollect them all. Well, you don't have to try everything it says on each customer. I was just glancing over a chapter a while ago about that. It tells about the different kinds of customers, how you're supposed to size them up and how you treat each type. Well, I think we ought to treat all the customers just the same, not show no favorites, Lon. Well, they mean some things will work on one type of customer that won't work on another. Well, wh what do you mean, type of customer? Well, they've got a bunch of different types, according to the book. Wait, where is that? I turned the page down. I mean... Well, you sure been studying that thing. I'll say that for you. Had your nose buried in it ever since Here it is, here it is, right here. Uh -huh. There are several types of customers. The most common of which are the aggressive type, the impulsive type, the reticent type, the friendly type, the intellectual type, the indecisive type, the suspicious type, and each must be treated in a different manner. Well, what if you don't know what kind you're talking to, though, and you use a wrong talk on them? Well, it goes on to say here that the first thing a salesman has to learn to do is to size up your customer. Find out what type they are. 
Well, um, what's their size got to do with it? I say you size them up. Well, yeah, if they come in here wanting a pair of overhauls or something like that, but I don't see what difference it makes how big a fella is if he just wants a can of tomatoes or some baking powder. You can't always tell by the size of a fella that way, Lom. Not like Fred Quincy, for incident. Fred Quincy? What's he got to do with it? Well, you know how little and skinny he is. I'll put him up again, air man you ever seen when it comes to eating. I don't know where he puts it. Down there at the old settler's picnic this year. They left him there to guard the pies that they was going to use in a pie-eating contest. Yeah. I uh, dog is when it come time for the contest, they weren't a one of them pies left. You mean he had all the pies by himself? Well, he claimed there was a big bear come in there and ate him up. But, of course, everybody knowed it was him. Yeah. <laughs> they ought to give him the prize for winning the contest. Well, he couldn't. They had a big layer cake for the prize, and me dad means he hadn't ate that, too. He must have an appetite. Well, it just seems to sort of hit him by spells at eating. Now, they had a watermelon eating contest about a half hour later, and he just won second place in that. Well, I do know. And he's just a little bitty skinny feller, too. Well, size ain't got nothing to do with what they're talking about here in the book, though, Abner. When it says sizing up somebody, it means judging somebody by his looks or his words or how he acts. Well, you could tell by Fred Quincy's looks what size he was. I mean, well, it says here, for instance, you can always tell the impulsive type by their fast, quick, nervous motions and mannerisms of speech. Yeah, well, Fred at fast, too. Well, forget about Fred Quincy for a while. Listen to this. Concentrate on the book. Go ahead, go ahead. Says here... The way to handle this type of customer is to make the sales talk brief and to the point. Often, a quick demonstration of the article is much more impressive than a long, drawn-out sales argument. Yeah, well, now, what do they mean by that demonstration, Long? Well, demonstrate it. Show how it works before you try to sell it. Oh, hi, doggy. That's interesting. Oh, this is fine stuff to know here. They sound reasoning in everything it says, every line of it. Well, sir, I bound you the feller that wrote that could sell anything, you know it. Yeah. I don't reckon he's the one that come through here a few years ago selling lightning rods, was he? Selling what? Lightning rods. Oh, I don't know. I don't recollect that feller's name. Hell, it might be. He was a seller, I'll say that for him. He weren't here but a few days, and again he left town. He had lightning rods on everything in this town. Even sold old stingy Jim Watson the rest of them. If he sold old stingy Jim one way, he was a salesman, I'll say that for him. Had lightning rods on everything on his place. House, barn, silo, even the chicken coops. Two on his wagon and one on the plow. Had everything lightning rodded. For goodness sake. Well, you see, he must have found out just what type stingy Jim was and knowed the right way to handle it. See, stingy Jim is sort of the suspicious type. And a little on the indecisive type, if I know just what that means. Uh -huh. see, what it says here about them, find out just how he handled old stingy Jim. Yeah, read what it says. I'd love to sell him something. The suspicious or indecisive type are very slow to make up their mind. That's stingy Jim right there. And contrary to the impulsive type, a long and persuasive sales argument is most effective. The first step in handling this type is through gaining their confidence. This is usually accomplished by first discussing subjects in which they are interested, rather than rushing immediately into a sales argument. Uh, now, cripple that and run it through again, Lom. I believe I jumped the track there on Well, it means uh, don't be in a rush to sell them. Sort of visit with them. Talk about things they're interested in. Find out what they like. Now, with Stingy Jim, he loves money. And if I was going to undertake to sell here, I'd get on the subject. Lom, Lom, Cedric, oh. we hunt, Cedric. Well, now, Cedric's sort of that type we're just reading about. Well, he ain't Stingy, Cedric. No, but he's slow about making up his mind and all. Sort of the suspicious and indecisive type. Now, you try to rush him into a deal, and he'll balk on you. Oh, well, I know just how to handle him. He loves to fish and hunt. Yeah. I'll get to talking to him about that and see if I can't uh, sell him something. Yeah, this is a good chance for you to try it out. Now, just take your time. Yeah, mind you? out, mind out, mind oh. out. Yeah, howdy, Cedric. Come in, Cedric. Well, howdy. Uh, Mr. Abner, could I get about five pounds of horseshoe nails right quick? Why, sure, Cedric, sure. You helping your fall over at the blacksmith shop now, Cedric? No, Mom, just this afternoon I am. They got him swamped under over there. Shoeing one span of mules and got three teams of waiting. Well, you been doing any fishing lately, Cedric? No, Mom, I ain't, Mr. Abner. About about uh, five pounds of them nails. I hear Luther Phillips catched a 28-pound catfish down there in Big Eddie. Yes, Mom, I seen it down there at the barbershop yesterday morning. 
Well, what was a fish doing in the barber shop? Oh, he just brought it down there to show it off, I think. Oh, oh. Sit down, Cedric, sit down. Uh, no, Mama. Reckon I ain't got time. Paul's waiting on them nails. Been doing any hunting, Cedric? Ma, oh, went squirrel hunting last Friday. Well, where'd you go, over on old Piney Mountain? No, Mom. Just down there in them pin oak flats along the river there. Uh-huh. Did you do any good? Yes, Mom. They're pretty thick down there this year. You ain't out of them horseshoe nails, are you, Mr. Abner? Oh, well, all me and old Cedric got worlds of plenty of them back there. Now, don't worry about us running out of nothing here at the Jot em Down store. You can all depend on us. Whose dog did you take? Mom. Oh, uh, that little feisty Ezra Seastrunks. Little black and white one? <laughs> yes, Mom. Uh, Is he better than that hound of Ezra's old Trump? Uh, uh, well, I believe he puts them up a tree better. But what about them nails there? Oh, well, here, wait a minute. I'll get a hammer back here. I want to demonstrate them to you. Mom, you want to, want to do what? Wait a minute, Abner. You're getting mixed up there. That ain't for customers like Cedric. That's for the impulsive type. That's demonstrating. No, sir, you said it was for the spacious type, Long. I never done no secret. You thing. did, too. Don't you know you read it right? I know what it said. And let me find out here. I'll prove it to you. You're going to find out you're wrong, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Mr. Abner. Oh, wait a minute, Cedric. Wait a minute. See, I believe it was on this page you're here. You're wrong, you're wrong. Well, get your head out of the way. I can't see nothing. Your head right there in the book. Oh. Yeah, yeah, here it is, right here. The way to handle the impulsive type of customer is to make the sales talk brief and to the point. Often, a quick demonstration of the article is much more impressive than a long, drawn-out sales argument. See, the I granted, I know the edge. Well, I just got the two mixed up together there somewhere, I reckon. Well, all right, Cedric, uh, five pounds. Cedric, where'd he go? Uh, uh, hey, Cedric. Oh, there he goes, there he goes. I'm across the street in the Dick Huddleston store. Dad blamed that book anyway. Yeah, well, don't lay it on to the book now, Abner. It's our own fault. We sized him up wrong, I reckon. I granny Cedric must be the impulsive type. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. But now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner are still trying to adopt the methods suggested in the book they recently purchased, Modern Salesmanship, for their jot him down store. The old fellows are undecided as to whether this is going to prove successful for them, but they want to be sure and give it a thorough trial. As we look in on the little community today, Lum has gone home for lunch, and we find Abner down at the store playing checkers with Grandpappy Spears. Listen. Well, it's your move, Grandpappy. I know it, I know it. Don't rush me. Well, don't. hurry up now before Lum gets back. He'll be done nooning here in a few minutes, and... If he catches us here playing checkers, he'll hit the ceiling. Well, what you so feared of Lum about all of a sudden? I ain't afeard of him. I just promised him I wouldn't play no more checkers here in the store. Then you come along and made me. Well, what's come over you fellas anyway? Well, to be honest, I don't think much of it myself, Grandpap, but that new book we got on modern salesmanship says you ain't supposed to play checkers with your customers. Ah, oh, sassy fresh. You're just feared of me. That's the trouble. I'm getting to where I'm too good for you. <laughs> You'll never see the day you can beat me, Grandpappy Spears. I'm going to beat you in this game right here if you just quit bothering me and let me concentrate here. Let's see. Well, here. you can't do it less than you move. I'll tell you that. All right, sir. I'm going to move right up there. <laughs> That's just what I want you to do. Huh? I'll give you this man, and I'll take that, and then that, and then that, and then right on into your king roll. Oh, <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. I never take my hand off that checker. That ain't the move I want to make. Once you put that checker down, you got to leave it there. I don't know such you a thing. You do, don't it? Just put it right back down there now. Right there. Just here, lay it here, back here, down here. there. What's going on in here? Uh-oh. What you doing there, Abner? Oh, uh, just sitting here talking to Grandpab. What you doing with that checkerboard sitting there? Huh? Well, I do know, Grandpap. Looky there. Checkerboard sitting right there in front of us. Well, I was showing the goodness. I never had noticed it. Well, don't try none of that buffoonery on me. I know what you're doing. Now, put that board up and leave it up or I'm going to burn it. Abner Peabody, you promised me that I know it, I know it, I know just what I promised. 
Well, what's come over you all of a sudden, Lum? You got to where a body can't enjoy itself down here no more. First thing you know, you'll be cutting out whittling in here, too. It's done cut out. We're running this store on a modern base, Grand Bab. Modern salesmanships. Service with a smile. That's our new motto. I know Abner gets interested in the checker game. The customer could stand around here for 15 minutes before he'd get up and wait on him. Well, now, Grandpap never wanted nothing, Lum. There weren't nobody else in here, so I guess... That the... don't make no difference. There's plenty around here for you to do. You can wash them front windows if you've got so much time on your hands. I just washed them a couple of weeks ago. Mm, they ought to be washed every day. What are you trying to do? Wear that glass out? Another thing we got to do is sort out that canned goods on them shelves. Just look at it all mixed up together there. You grab a case of canned goods and start walking down them shelves and set a can any place you can find room for it. Yeah, but... All that stuff ought to be separated to itself. Just look up there now. There's peaches and hominy and tomatoes and salmons and sauerkraut and all them other things mixed up together there. A can of baking powder. I believe it is sitting there. Well, that's the way we've always put them Well, together. the book says that ain't no way to do business. Well, all right. But I still say it's handier this way. Somebody wants to buy something, why, no matter where you're at, you can just reach right up and get it. Don't have to walk clean down to the end of the shelf. Well, we paid $2 for that book, and I, Granny, we're going to go buy it, too. All right. I'll put the checkerboard up. I had you beat, too, Grandpa. Oh, no, you never. I did, done it. That last move was going to let me ride in your king rope. Yeah, but I never made that move. I never even take my hand off You of did, it. too. Now, here, did. here, just cut out that argument. All right, I'm putting it up, putting it up, putting it up. Squire right Skimp coming across the street there. Get on your feet, Abner, and get ready to wait on him. Oh, he don't want nothing. More likely just loafing or wants to sell us some insurance. Well, how do you know he don't want nothing? That book says sell them something whether they want it or not. Well, it ain't none of my business, Lum, but you can't expect a feller to buy something every time he comes in the store here. Yeah, but we want to be up and ready to wait on them if they do want something. According to the book, that's the way to do it. That squire will sell you something, too, whether you want it or not. He's made a good living for years around here selling insurance and real estate and one thing or another, just because he's a good salesman. Maybe he's read the book. Yeah, well, I wouldn't take Squire Skimp, for example, to pattern myself after I wouldn't trust him as far as I can drop kick a anvil. Better mind out. Here he comes, there. All right, Abner, get ready. Well, howdy, Squire. Uh, come in, Squire, old boy. Proud to see you. Proud to hey, see you. Hey, what can we do for you, Squire? Got a good price on flour today, Squire. Yeah, how about some new shirts? Well, here, here, now, let me get my breath here. What's going on, anyway? Well, we're waiting on you. Service with a smile. That's our new motto. Sassy, Frank. Well, I never saw you fellas jump up like that before. What's come over you, Lump? Oh, we're running the store a little different now, Squire. We get just as good a service here as you do at Fort Smith or Little Rock or any of them other big cities. Well, uh, what prompted this new attitude, Lump? Why, we just We got a book. That's what we done. A book? Yeah, might as well tell you now, Squire. We got a book on modern salesmanships. Tells how to run a store in an up-to-date way of doing business. Well... Well, how's it uh, working out so far, Lum? Why? Well, to be honest, it ain't working very good so far. Fact is, I don't think we've had enough customers to give it a thorough tryout. Mm-hmm. Well, you now it sounds to me like a good idea, Lum. Oh, it'll work. I still say it'll work, even if our business has fell off. But, of course, you'll have to have uh, customers. After they get in here, why, this idea of yours is all right. But what you need now is something that'll bring them in here, Lum. I hadn't thought about that. Why, sure. Yeah, that's the trouble right there. Uh, how would you go about getting them in here, Squire? Why, well, there's uh, several different methods that you could do, Lum. Mm -hmm. Now, what you need is a good man to give you new ideas along that line. Uh, a sales promotional manager, that's what you need. A uh, good man? Yes. Uh, who did you have in mind? Why, uh... Well, now, it so happens, Lum, that uh, my business is uh, rather quiet at this time, and um, if we could arrive at a satisfactory figure as to the uh, proper remuneration that I could expect for my efforts, uh, the time and trouble it'd be necessary for me to expand, I believe that I'd be glad to come in here and take over that end of the business for you. Uh... Oh, you mean if we could get together on salary, huh? Yes, yes, that's the idea, Lum, yes. Well, how much would you say you ought to have? Oh, <laughs> I hadn't thought much about it, Lum. Uh, 
Oh, I might consider that, uh, oh, say, just $150 a month, just to help you out. Hi, right, Grannies, it's a deal. Now, wait a minute now, Lom. We collect half of that's my money you're spending there. Well, ain't you for it? Well, I think we ought to sort of think it over and talk about it before we just make a deal. No. Oh. Well, we'll talk it over, Squire, and I'll let you know this afternoon. Yes, well, I'll tell you, I'll excuse myself right now, and then you gentlemen can go right ahead and discuss it. I'll be over at the barber shop when you want to see me long. All right, Squire, much obliged. And not at all, not at all. Granny, he, he might be the very fellow we're looking for, you know. Well, now, Lum, you know Squire Skim. He'll study up some idea that'll have us in trouble before we know it. I just don't trust him. I believe you're just right about that, too, Abner. Well, Grandpa, what would you do if you was us to help our business? Well, now, I wouldn't have said nothing, Lum, but you asked me. Yeah, I want to know. Well, I think that book you bought's ruining your business. Ruining it? Yes, sir. Now, I hear a lot of talk that's going around this town that don't get back to you fellas. Folks is losing confidence in you. They used to come in here and hang around and loaf and buy what they needed without being pestered to death. Of course they did. Now they come in here and you and Abner both rush up to them and start right in to sell them something. They figure your prices must be higher in Dick Huddleston's store or you wouldn't try so hard to sell them. All right, doggy, that's just the way they've been acting, too, Grandpa. Well, this book sounds like it has a lot of good sound reasoning to me. Well, now, I'll tell you, Mom. I think that book for a big city might work out all right. In them stores there, a feller don't know nobody when they come into the store. They just come in to buy something. But here in Pine Ridge, it's different. Now, we ain't got no place to loaf around here except here and over at Dick Huddleston's store and the barber shop. And these new ideas you and Abner's using makes a feller feel sort of uncomfort. That's just what I say, too, Grandpa. My well, Granny, I never had thought about it just that way. I don't know what you're right about that, Grandpa. Well, I know one thing. It ain't near as much fun running a store this way. No, no, you're right about that. I sort of miss them naps I used to take over there on that stack of overhauls over on the counter in the afternoon. Well, I miss the checker game and arguing politics and stuff like that like we used to do, too. Yes, I right, Granny, that settles it. I'm going to take that dad blame book on modern salesmanship and throw it just as fur as I can fling it. Go back to running our store like we used to. Well, good for you. <laughs> I don't always let me get that checkerboard, Grandpa. Now, don't you fellas get to arguing and wrangling at the top of your voice. I'm going to pile up there on that counter and get some sleep. Well, what if a customer comes in here, Lom? I can't quit and wait on them right in the middle of a checker game. Well, tell them to wait on themselves. Oh, yeah. It's your move, Grandpa. Well, Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. All right, dog is Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner have given up the modern method of salesmanship in running their store and have settled back once again into the checker-playing point of view. To make their decision final, Lum went into the county seat this morning to return the book, Magic Salesmanship, and to get his money back. As we look in on the little community now, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store that Lum has just returned. Listen. Did you get the two dollars back, Lum? No, they won't take books back in there. What, did you tell him it never worked? Yeah, but he says they never guaranteed it to increase our business now. Well, the book claimed it would increase your business 72%. I know, I know. I told him we tried it for a week. Instead of helping our business, it'd run all of our customers off. They're all trading over at Dick Huddleston's store now. Well, Lum, why don't we sell the book to Dick then? Maybe he'll start trying them modern salesmanship methods and run the customers all back over here. <laughs> I wouldn't give this thing to my worst enemy. Oh. Magic salesmanship. Only thing magic about this is it makes your customers disappear. Well, now, don't leave it laying around here, Lom. You might forget yourself and start reading it sometime. I ain't going to leave it no place. I'm going to burn the thing up before somebody else makes the mistake of reading it, too. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, just hand it here. I'll burn it up right now. Well, don't start no fire in that stove today, yet. Oh, there's just a bunch of paper in here. I've been accumulating all summer. Need to burn them anyway. Yeah, you get it so hot in here, we can't stay in the store. Well, I want to get rid of this thing. I know good and well if that thing's laying around here, you'll be glancing through it and trying out them crazy ideas. Now... I dove it with all that paper in there. She'll burn now. <laughs> that's a good shudden. Well, that's just the same as burning up two dollars there. Well, it's worth it to get shut of it. Our business was just going down something wonderful. Them new methods just won't work here in Pine Ridge long. Well, I wouldn't go so first to say that. Whilst I don't like the ideas in that book, there's other modern things we could use around here. For instance, what do you think about a adding machine? A what? Adding machine. What's that? It's a machine. It adds stuff up for you. Somebody come in and want a long list of groceries and stuff, you can run it up on that machine and give you the right answer. It calls it out? No, it prints it sort of like a typewriter. Well, how do you know it gives the right answer? You can add it up yourself and see that it's right. Well, what's the use in having a machine if you've got to add things up, too? Well, you don't have to add them up yourself. Well, how can you tell when it's right, then? It's always right. It, it never makes a mistake. Well, I know I wouldn't want it, then. If there's anything I hate and despise, it's somebody that's always right. Never makes a mistake. Thinks they're such dead blame perfect. Is that all it does, just add up stuff? Yeah, some of them. Some of them add and subtract and multiply and everything else. Some of them smarter than others, huh? Got a better head on them for figures. Well, they're made different. The kind I'm talking about we could use here in the store to add up grocery bills with just ads. Well, how would it know the prices of a different stuff in here? Oh, you, you have to run it. Somebody come in here and want a dollar's worth of sugar, you push the dollar key on the machine and pull the handle, and then they want a dollar's worth of beans, so you push the dollar key again and pull the handle, and then press the key that says total and pull the handle, and a little slip of paper comes out and says two dollars. Well, I can do that. One dollar and one dollar is two dollars. And you don't have to pull no handle. Well, that's just an example, Abner. This thing will add up a whole list of figures just as fast as you can set them down. It's the dead blamedest thing you ever seen. Just wait till it gets out here. Gets out here? Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Huh? While I was in at the bookstore trying to get them to take that book back, the fellow that waited on me got to showing me how that ad machine worked and... I don't know, one thing led to another, and first thing I know, well, anyway, it'll be out in the morning. Coming out by itself? No, the mailman's bringing it. How could it come out? Well, if it's as smart as you say it is, it ought to be able to find its way to Pine Ridge. It ain't smart, Abner. It's just good at figures. Well, tell it to get on Highway 88 and come 22 miles and it's in Pine Ridge. Them's figures. Well, an uh, adding machine can't walk. It's sort of like a typewriter. It just sits there on the desk. Well, I do know. I'm sort of anxious to meet him. Or see him. Or see it. Well, how it does it, I don't know. But I believe it'll be worth the money to us here in the store. Cut out a lot of mistakes. No telling how much money we've lost by adding stuff up wrong. Well, I don't think we need nothing like that, Mom. Well, like that fellow said this morning, it'll pay for itself in no time. Oh, well, that's different. I thought you meant we's going to have to pay for it. Well, we are. This is second-handed, but I give him a check for $50. $50? Well, they sell for over $100 brand new. Why, we won't make that many mistakes in 10 years. Well, that's the trouble. There ain't no way of telling how many mistakes we make, unless we got something to check up on us. Of course, we could make more mistakes and pay for it quicker, I reckon. Well, now, just wait till you see it before you start making up your mind about it. Well, I know these customers here in Pine Ridge Long. I just don't believe they'll take its word for it. You can't press buttons and pull handles and tell them how much they owe you. They want to see you set it down with a pencil and count your fingers once in a while. You take old Grandpa Masters, for incidence. I know... Wait, wait, wait. Here comes Cedric Lee, huh? Huh? Oh, oh, he ain't been over here since we cut out them modern sales methods, has he? Oh, thank goodness I don't have to jump up and start waiting on it. No, we're just going to let folks tell us when they want something. I believe they like it better that way. Wait on themselves if they want That's it. That's the thing to do. Yeah, howdy, Cedric. Come on back, Cedric. Howdy, howdy. 
Here's a letter for you, Mr. Lum. Come over there to the post office, and Mr. Dick Huddleston said he thought it might be important, so I brung it over to you. Well, thank you, Cedric. Chicago, Illinois. Grange. Yes, Mom, I noticed that's where it's from, Chicago. I can watch Chicago's wanting with me. It's a pretty big place, you know. Yes, I know what it is. Uh, are you fellas cold this afternoon? No, I ain't, Cedric. Facts is, I'm hot. If you're cold, why don't you stand over by the stove, Cedric? No, Mom, no. It's hot in here. Just wondering what you're doing with a fire in the stove on a day like this. Oh, <laughs> just burning up some trash papers and a book that Lum wanted to get rid of. Hi, right, Granny. Listen to this, Abner. Huh? We have just been informed that you have recently purchased our book, Magic Salesmanship. Well, I'll be dogged. I reckon how they found that out clean up her. <laughs> I don't know. Them things sure get around in a hurry, don't they? Yeah. This purchase on your part reveals you to be an alert, intelligent, modern-minded young man, possessing the qualities that make for great success in the business world. Well, now, what do you know about that? That's a compliment coming all the way from Chicago, you know. Yeah, uh, what else does it say, Long? Yeah, this is nice. Great success in the business world. Therefore, we know that a young man of your ability and ambition will never be satisfied with a mere salesman's job, but will want to advance to sales manager of your company or even to some executive position. I said, I just can't understand how they found out so much about me. <laughs> they sure got bad, ain't they? Well, Whitey Madison taking a trip up there to Chicago once long to the World's Fair, he, he might have told him about you. Oh, he went to the Columbia Exposition. I know it. That's a World's Fair. No, yes, well, they'd have they they forgot story. everything he told them. They would, huh? Wouldn't have listened no way. Don't make no difference. Let me go on here. This is interesting, you know it? Yeah. In view of this, we are suggesting that you enroll for one of our correspondence courses, such as business management. Executive training. Corporation management. Now, Granny, this might be just what I've been looking for all my life. Well, what do you have to do to take them courses, Long? The tuition fee for each of these courses is $250 for the first six months. Oh. I thought there was a catch to it. Reason they being so nice. Sir. Wait a minute. However, our vocational guidance director has selected you for a six-month scholarship, entitling you to one free six-month course. Hi, uh, Grannies, I've been selected. Did you hear that? Well, good for you. <laughs> Just like good. making me a present of $250, what it is. Hi, <laughs> uh, Grannies, I win a contest I never even know I was in. This is my lucky day, you know it. Corporation executive. That's the one I'm going to take. I know that already. Is that looking any Ain't brother. that fine, Cedric? Long win it. Gosh. I was in a contest once. Had a picture in a magazine, a picture of a tree, a great big tree, and you had to see how many faces or heads you could find in it. I, I never win the Shetland Pony, but they, they, they let me sell some greeting cards for them. Is that all it says, Long? Uh, oh, that... I never finished it, did I? Oh. Trying to figure out what big company I want to join up with. Oh. <laughs> Go down here. To receive this scholarship, all you have to do is fill out and send in the coupon on the last page of the Magic Salesmanship book. Ah. Uh. Well, I'll be dead blamed. I told you not to light that fire. Well, here, where, where are you going, Lon? I'm going into the county seat and buy another one of them books. Rennies, I wish you'd learn to quit setting fire to everything. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. After buying a book, Magic Salesmanship, Lum received a letter from the publishers informing him that he'd been selected to receive a free scholarship in one of their correspondence courses. Needless to say, Lum has wasted no time in taking advantage of this generous offer for a higher education. And as we look in on our friends today, we find Abner at the store. Lum has just entered. Listen. 
Yeah, that's the reason I was late getting down. I stopped to send that letter to the correspondent school. Well, that oughtn't to have took you that long. Well, I had to decide which course I wanted to take and all. Oh, well, which one did you pick out? Well, I never picked none out. I just wrote and thanked them for winning the free scholarship and told them I was just going to leave it up to them which one to send me. Well, you don't care what you are, huh? Well, they all sound good. Corporation executive and architect and civil engineer and detective and I don't know what else. Now, that's what I'd love to be, a detective. I used to have a book on that myself. Yeah, I know you did. Oh, it's interesting, all right. I can't wait to see what they decide for me to be. No. Uh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, Lama. Uh, that thing come a while ago. What thing? That contraption that you bought in at the county seat yesterday. Oh, you mean the ad machine? Yeah, it's sitting back there on the counter. Well, why didn't you tell me? Did you try it out? No, the man brought it, and I told him just set it down back there. Well, didn't you even look at it? Oh, I glanced at it a couple of times. What's the matter, Abner? Are you mad because I bought that adding machine? No, I ain't mad. I just don't like it. Well, how do you know you don't like it? You ain't even examined it. You told me yesterday all about how it can add. Oh, come here. Let me show it to you. I don't want to see it. Look at it. Sitting back there. Thinks it can out-add anybody. Wait a minute. You ain't jealous of that adding machine, are you? No, I ain't jealous of it. I just don't want to have nothing to do with it. Well, I bought it here for us to use here in the store. Well, you'll go right ahead and use it. I told you I ain't having a thing to do with it. I've been adding up the grocery orders in here for years, and if it gets to where I got to go to a little black box like that thing sitting there to tell me the right answers, why, I'll just take out, quit the store business. Well, you've got the wrong altitude about this, Abner. You act like this adding machine is criticizing the way you add up figures. Well, if I've been adding them right, why, we don't need it, and... If I ain't, I don't want a dad blame little contraption like that to tell me about it. Well, we might be making some mistakes in here that's costing us a lot of money, Abner. This machine don't make mistakes. It's always right. Well, if you think so, dad blame much of it, why don't you take it in for a partner then? I'll quit. You all can just buy me now, out. Now, wait a minute, Abner. Wait a minute. I know the minute I come in here, you's mad about something. I ain't mad no such a thing. I... Well, I just don't like to be left alone in here with that thing. Left alone with it? No, sir. It just gives me the creeps. Well, they don't affect me that way. Nothing wrong with it. Second hand has been used before. It used to be in the bank in there at the county seat. Can them things add money, too? Add anything. Well, if it adds so uh, good, why did the bank get shut of it then? Oh, it's still working all right. I guess they just traded in on a new one. Well, I... Might make a few mistakes in my adding once in a while, but that's one thing I can say for me. I ain't had to be traded in for a new one. <laughs> what do you keep turning your head for? You won't even look at it. Here, turn around here. Now, I see it, I see it, I see it. Sitting there with them little white and red keys. Thinks it's a fancy. Just trying to look like a typewriter, that's all it's trying to do. Swung to goodness. Let me show you how it works. You'll think a heap more of it. No, I won't neither. When I don't like something, I don't like it. Like Squire Skim. I never liked him the first time I seen him, and I don't like him yet. Well, this is different from somebody, Abner. Uh, call out a couple of numbers, and I'll show you how it adds them up. Lom, I don't need this thing to show me how to add nothing up. Well, I'll uh, show you. Take, for instance, uh, 15. <laughs> Press them numbers, pull the handle, and add 15 to it. Here's the answer. Thirty. There you are, thirty. I done said it. Beat it a mile. <laughs> Pretty slow, ain't it? Yeah, I'll try another one here. Um, six. Uh, ten. And four. And two. Now, let's see what we got. Twenty-two. There you are, twenty-two. <laughs> I'd hate to be that dogged slow. Wait a minute, where are you going? Up to the front of the store and sit down. That thing makes a mistake, why, let me know and I'll straighten it out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come back here, Abner. Uh-huh. You think you're so smart with them figures. I'll really show you how this thing can add. 
Are you ready? Fire the open barrel. Give them out. I'm ready if it is. I'm going to give you some big numbers. I don't care. I don't care how big it is. Uh, Worry about your machine, not me. 467. Uh, 893. Uh, 528. Uh-oh, lost me. Uh, 312. Uh, 745. Now we'll total it. And what'd you get? Huh? What's the answer? Oh, I, I couldn't hear you very good, Lom. Uh, what does it say? Well, the answer is, uh, 2,945. Let me see that slip. Uh, hand me that pencil there. And right there. Just hand well, it you down. stand it up. It's right. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know how it does it, but I never have catched a thing making a mistake. Seven and three is ten. Five is fifteen. Wait your time. Eight is twenty-three. Four is twenty-seven. And carry two. It makes twenty-nine. Two thousand nine hundred and forty-five. I know he's we're right, Long. <laughs> well, yeah, but it had the answer long ago. Well, sure, but it got to put all them figures down on paper, too. I was trying to do it in my head. Quick as I seen the paper, well, I could add them up. All right. You take the pencil and set them down on a piece of paper, and at the same time, I'll put them down with this machine, and I'll bet you it'll get the right answer before you do. Mom, I ain't got time to play games with no machine. I'm too busy. Busy doing what? Huh? What have you got to do so important? Well, well, I've got to straighten up the shelves in here for one thing. All right, just get started, and I'm glad to hear you say well, that. Well, I never ahead. meant I no, had to do it right now. No, sir, I won't. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here comes a customer. <laughs> I can't do it right now, Lum. That's customer. just Cedric Weehunt coming up out there. Well, he's a customer. He's got money. Got over $2,000 in the bank. All right, go on up there and wait on him, but I'll bet you he don't want to buy nothing. Well, I'll talk him into buying something. Come in, Cedric. What can we do for you? Well, honey, Mr. Abner. Just wanted to buy a lead pencil. Well, good for you. I knowed you was a customer. <laughs> Did you hear that, Lom? Yeah, I heard it. Get him to buy two things, and I'll add it up here. You want a nickel pencil, Cedric? No, Mom. Much work as I've got to do, I better have five of them penny pencils, I think. All right, five penny ones. I'll get them right now. Uh, just a minute, Abner, and I'll tell you what that comes to. I know what it comes to. How come you got so much work to do, Cedric? Well, I'm, I'm going back to school, Mr. Abner. Well, I thought you finished school five or six years ago. No, Mom, I never finished. I just quit. Them desks got too little for me. I couldn't get my knees up under them. Well... I'm just sitting in a chair over there now, sitting up there by the teacher. Well, I do know. Well, how come you decide to start back to school all of a sudden? Oh, ain't you saw the new school teacher? No, I don't believe I have. <laughs> She's teaching arithmetic. That's all I'm taking. <laughs> five, Abner. Huh? Them pencils comes to five cents. I know that. Swan, that Lom thinks that machine is the smartest thing he ever seen. Well, what kind of a machine is it, Mr. Abner? An uh, adding machine. And whilst I wouldn't want it to hear me say it, Cedric, it can outdo anything i ever seen in my life when it comes to adding. A machine that does adding up? Yes, sir. Adds it right That's up. That's what I wanted these pencils for, to add up some figures the teacher gave me. Reckon that machine could add them up for me? Why, sure it could. Tickle that lum to death to find some use for it. <laughs> hey, lum, Cedric wants to get you to add up some figures for him. Well, good. Bring them on back here, Cedric. I'll get the answer for you. Yeah, where's the list, Cedric? Right here in my pocket. These is pretty big amounts here, Mr. Lum. Now, it don't make no difference how big they are. This machine will add them all right. Go ahead and call them out. Yeah, what are they, Cedric? Well, let's see. Uh, uh, first in here is 3810. 3810. Damn, it's big enough. Uh, 4927. 4927. Uh, 5985. 5985. Other land, babe. And that's all. All right, sir. That's twice. Total it. And there's your answer. Uh, 14,722. Now, Swan, I don't see how it does it. Sure that's right to answer, Mr. Loom? Yes, sir. I'll guarantee it to be right, Cedric. 14,722. Well, I'll just put down, uh, oh, I'll put 15,806 down here then. Well, wait a minute. That's the wrong answer, Cedric. Yes, Mom, I know it. 
That's the reason I wanted to be sure what the right answer was, so as I could give the teacher the wrong answer. Well, you never will pass your grades that way, Cedric. Oh, of course not. But if I give her the wrong answer, she keeps me in after school. <laughs> Boy, is she pretty. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. All right, dog is lump, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, now that Lum and Abner have given up their modern sales methods and stopped bothering their customers... Business at the Jotham Down store has picked up again and is running along smoothly. Lum spends his time finding things to add up on his new adding machine, but Abner refuses to have anything to do with the new convenience. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner over at the Jotham Down store talking over the telephone. Listen. No, he ain't here, Ezra. Why, he ought to be back now. He just went over to Dickerson store to get the mail. Uh-huh. Uh, when? Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, all right, I'll tell you. Yeah, honey, honey, honey. Just a minute, oh, Excuse me, Abner. I never noticed you talking on the telephone. Yeah, sit down, Grandpa. Sit down, sit down. Be done here in just a minute. Was there anything else, Esri? All right. <laughs> not at all, not at all. Goodbye. Well, how are you today, Grandpa? Oh, just appeared as a cat bird. Well. <laughs> Thought I'd come over and beat you a game of checkers just for practice. Well, I'll play you, but you better do your practicing before you get over here if you expect to beat me. I'll tell you that right now. Sassy fresh. Sassy fresh. Beat you with one hand. Anybody that lets Mose Moose beat them ain't going to give me no trouble. I never let Mose Moose beat me no such a thing. Well, that's what they're telling down there at the barber shop. Yeah, you just hear their tell of it, though. Said you got mad and kicked the checkerboard over and stomped right out the door. Well, who wouldn't get mad? Have to play half the town every time you get in a game down there. I was supposed to be playing moles. That dad blamed Grandpa Masters and Uncle Henry Lunsford and two or three other fellers standing behind his chair nudging him on every move. He told me you never got a man in his king roll. <laughs> Now, listen, Abner, I've heard enough joshing about that already. Get the board. Yeah, well, maybe I better give you about two moves to my one just to make the game more interesting. Yeah, just wait. I'll make you chomp them words up and swallow them. Well, I'll give you a chance right now. Here, here. Move your knee there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Which ones you want, the red ones or the black ones? I don't care. I can beat you with either one of them. I'll just let you take your pick. Give you that advantage. Cradle, cradle. I could beat you and give me all of them. Sassy fresh. You're getting to where you're as big a braggart as Ezra Seastrom. Oh, that reminds me, Grandpa. Don't let me forget to tell Lom that Ezra telephoned him up just now. Ezra, huh? Yeah, he's wanting Lom to come over to a school board meeting tonight. I know one reason he won't go, though. But I got to tell him, got to tell him. Ah, well, here, I believe I'll take the black ones here. Yeah, all right, sir. I thought Lom was president of the school board. No, no, that's the reason I know he won't attend the meeting. See, they elected Ezra president this year. Oh, Lom's awful put out about it. Well, he ought to get his back up over that. He's been president for 10 or 12 years now, hand running. Yeah. Well, another thing, he wanted them to hire Professor Tate from down there at Odin to teach the school this year, and they turned around and hired some woman to do it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I seen her the other day, too. I don't blame Lom after getting a look at her. She looks too young and too rosy job for a school teacher. I never talked to her, but I knowed from looking at her she's a rattlebrain. Yeah, well, now, that's a different one, Grandpa. That girl was just out here helping till the other one got here. She was from in there at the county seat. This new one is uh, Little Rock, I believe she said. Yeah. She's in here a while ago. Right nice-looking woman, too. About, oh, 35-year-old, I'd say. Summer's in there. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Ain't that other than that young one. If folks is going to let their young'uns off to go to school, they ought to provide good teachers for them. I've always said that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, here, go ahead and move if you're going to. Yeah, yeah, well, let's see here. Wait a minute, you moved right here, didn't you? Yeah, right there, that's it. That night. Well, that's one. i never seen a move like that on the first move before. Yeah, I'll move right up here. Well, that's just where I wanted you to move. 
I'll move right there, and now I got you blocked anyway you go. <laughs> well, that'll be John Brown. Yeah, let's see here. Go on, move that beat you anyway you go. And don't take rash it. me now. Oh, don't go rash on me. your beat. Me. Give up, give up, holler, Uncle. What's that thing sitting over there, Abner? Don't try to change your subject. Well, I mean it. What is that contraption there? Something new, ain't it? Oh, that thing. Yeah. That's an ad machine at Lombard. Ad machine? Yeah, and whilst I will say I've sold people, er, things that I've liked better, Grandpa, but it can outdo anything when it comes to adding that i ever seen in my life. Well, that's fine again. You mean that thing adds up figures by itself? Yes, sir. Go on, move. Well, here, I want to see how that thing works. Grandpap, you know I've got you beat and you're just trying to get out of plane. I ain't no such a thing. I'm interested in such as this. I've always loved machines ever since I was a little boy. <laughs> hey, come on, show me how it works, Abner. You come on over here and finish this game. Yeah, I bound you, you don't know how to work it yourself. I do, Donnie. Well, come on, let's see it then. Well, now, to be honest, me and it don't get along very good together, Grandpap. Don't get along? No, oh, the dad blame thing is always right. Never makes a mistake. I don't know what I'd give to get that thing mixed up just one time. I tried giving it figures as fast as I could down here this morning, but it comes out with the right answer every time. Well, I do know. Maybe you ought to try slipping up on it, taking it by surprise. That might fool it. I do it. That's a good idea. I tell you what, Grandpa, <laughs> you stand here in front of it and just make out like you ain't paying no attention to it at all and... I'll slip around behind it and jump out there and push a bunch of them keys down all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, let's try it once. I hate to take advantage of it, but that thing makes me so dead blame mad I can't see it. Yeah, I don't like machines like that. I never had no use for typewriters. You never have. Oh, they spell better than me. Well, here, here, now, here, I'll press the, all them keys down at once here. Now, start talking about something else, Grandpa, so it won't speck what we're doing. Huh? Oh, what do you want me to talk about? Anything. No well, tell me something. I can't make up stuff. Well, the land sakes alive. The weather. Yeah, weather's fine. Beautiful yeah. weather we're having, Grandpa, ain't it? Yeah. Wait a minute, John, here comes along. Oh, well, here, here. We better hurry. Better hurry. Here, come on, come on. <laughs> Got you that time. <laughs> yeah. Now, let's see you get all of them if you're so smart. Hey, <laughs> doggies, we fooled it, Grandpa. Look at there. Nothing come out at all. I knowed I'd get that blasted thing. Well, uh, you know, we're too fast for it, I reckon, Abner. <laughs> Caught it napping. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Lom, I got the best of it. Got the best of what? This ad machine. I'll give it figures so fast it couldn't add them up. <laughs> for goodness sake. I wish you'd quit fooling with that machine, Abner. You're going to break it. I know there must be some way to get it mixed up. Oh, Swan, ever since we got that machine, you've been trying to make it out wrong some way or other. I believe you're jealous of it. I put them down there so fast it couldn't think up no answer of no kind, right or wrong. Let's see the slip. What slip? The slip with the figures on it. It got so mixed up it never gave out none long. More than likely sitting there still studying. <laughs> Push it now, you might get the answers. Had time to figure it out by now. Well, no wonder you never got no answer. It's out of paper there. We've got to put in a new roll of paper. Huh? No, just get away from it and leave it alone now. That'll ruin it, making it add without no paper in there. I know it. Figure out some way to get out of it. Come on, Grandpa. Let's finish that checker game. Uh, Ezra Seastrunk called a few minutes ago, Lom, to tell you they's having my school board meeting tonight. School board meeting? What he said. I ain't interested. They think they know so much about running the school, just let them go ahead and run it. Well, now, you oughtn't to feel that way about it, Lom. Oughtn't let your own personal feelings interfere with... Doing something for the good of the community. Why, of course not. That bunch of idiots ain't doing nothing for the good of the community, I'll tell you that. I don't want to go over there and listen to that Esri Seastrunk spout off at the mouth. Him with his big ideas on how to run the school. Well, it's your business, Lum, dude. You like, come on, Grandpap, move. Well, let's start over, Abner. I even forgot whose move it is. Well, I ain't. It's yours, and I got you beat. Go on. Well, it's too late now. The checkers is all mixed up. Looky there. And we'll have to start over. I'll be dead blamed. That's out and out cheating, and you know it. Cheat. You bumped that board with your knee of purpose, Grandpa. I never done no such a thing. It was an accident. It wasn't no such a thing. I done it. All right. If that's the way you want to play, I doggies will just quit. Just put the board up. Was there any mail, Lom? Um? Huh? Was there any mail first? Oh, no. But I just seen the beautifulest woman I ever seen in my life. Well, who was she? I don't know. Some tourist, I reckon. Uh-huh. She come out of Dick Huddleston's store and got in her car and drove off just as I come out. Well. Granny, she was pretty. If I knowed where she lived at, I'd follow her clean to Chiney. 
Oh, Chinese woman. No, but it was love at first sight. I know that. Big brown eyes. Smiled at me, too. Oh, well, I do know. <laughs> yeah, brown curly hair. Had on a red coat and a red hat. With a feather in it? Yeah, had a feather. How'd you know? Well, she was in the store here a while ago, directly after you left, trying to buy some colored Crayoli. That's a new school teacher. New school teacher? Why, sure. That's what they're having the school board meeting for tonight. So that all the school board can get acquainted with her, you know. Yeah, that's a good idea. Good idea. Makes her welcome in the community. That's a thing, yeah. Get her acquainted with everybody. Make her feel at home. Come on, Abner. Just one more game here. Grandpap, I told you I don't want to play no more checkers with you. Just got to where every time a fella gets you cornered, you figure out some way to get out of it. I ain't gonna cheat. You'll cheat, too. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Hello, Ezra, old boy. How are you? That's the way you want to play. This is Lum Edwards. Let it go. Oh, just fine, just fine. Why, Ezra, I just wanted to call you up and tell you I'll be at the school board meeting tonight. Yes, sir. And I, Granny, you can count on me to help out any way I can this year. If I can do anything to help you, don't hesitate to call on me. All right, I'll see you tonight, old boy. Goodbye. Now, Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know, Miss Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, Storm. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. When Lum discovered the attractive woman he noticed in Pine Ridge yesterday was the new school teacher, he quickly ended his feud with the school board and renewed his interest in the town's educational system. It's late afternoon as we look in on the little community today and we find Abner alone at the store. Lum is just entering. Listen. Where in the world have you been all afternoon? Huh? Oh, I've uh, been over talking to Ezra Seastrong. Ezra? I thought you and him never got along very well since they made him president of the school board this year. Who, Ezra? Well, he's a fine, upright citizen. I don't know where you could have got an idea like that in your head. Well, you were saying here yesterday what a smart aleck he was and how you never had no use for him. I don't recollect saying no such a thing. And besides, it must have been some other Ezra I was thinking about. Who? Why, well, hey, Ezra, uh, Ezra... Barnes. Barnes. Yeah, there's a fella named Ezra Barnes that lives down at Opal. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one. I hate and despise him. That must have been who I was talking about right there. Ezra Barnes, huh? Yeah, that's his name, uh -huh. yeah. Well, what was you and Ezra Seastrunk talking so long about? Oh, about the school. See, this is his first year being president of the board, and... We were just talking about different improvements we want to make on the school this year. Improvements? Yeah, painting up the schoolhouse and fixing up the teacher's desk there. Oh, uh, did you meet the new teacher last night? Oh, yeah, yeah. Heard me just hit it right off together. You did? <laughs> <laughs> Had a long talk with one another. Well, wh what did you talk about? Oh, I don't know. I told her I was glad to meet her, and she said she was glad to meet me, and... I told her I was glad she was in Pine Ridge, and she said she was glad to be here. Well, that's interesting. Everybody being so glad about everything. What else? Oh, that's about all that was said, I reckon. That dad blamed Budinsky Ezra come over there and started talking, butted in. And... Ezra Barnes? Ezra Barnes? Who's that? Well, that's that fella you hate so bad down there at Opal. Oh, no, no. My friend and chum, Ezra Seastrunk. Natural, he had to do a lot of talking, him being president of the board. Yeah. Grannies. She's even prettier than I thought she was. Who, Ezra? Oh, the new school teacher, Mrs. Fredericks. Oh, is that her name? Yeah. yeah. Ain't that a pretty name? Fredericks. Yeah, it's all right, I reckon. One of these days, I might change that to Eddards. Oh, Lom. <laughs> Don't you <laughs> ever tell her I said that. I ain't gonna tell nobody nothing. Granny, they would have to pick this year to make Ezra president of the board. Here, last year, when I was a president, we had that dead blame Professor Harrison teaching. Well, you was the one at Harding. Yeah, I know it. Maybe they was right in taking the job away from me if I ain't got no more sense than that. Here, I'd have had a good excuse to go over there to Sister Simpson's every night if I was still president. Sister Simpson's? What in the world do you want to go over there and talk to that old gossip fur? I don't mean to see her. 
I wouldn't go to a dog fight with that old woman. I mean, Miss Fredericks. She's staying over at Sister Simpson's boarding house. Oh, oh, I see. I wondered if you were starting to spark Sister Simpson. <laughs> Of course not. Well, I know she's had her cat set for you for years long. Well, she ought to know by now she's wasting her time. I just can't hardly stand her. It's a shame a nice woman like Miss Fredericks has got to stay over at a place like that. We ought to have another boarding house here in this town. Something up to date. Well, Sister Simpson sets a pretty good table on. Yeah, if you can put up with that everlasting talking of hers. I love to see our school teachers made as comfort as possible. You do, huh? Yeah, they come here, perfect strangers. This is their home during the school term. It's up to us to make them feel welcome. Uh Uh-huh. Everybody ought to make it a point to get better acquainted with her. And let well, her know they're that. having that sociable over at the schoolhouse tonight so that everybody can meet her long. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know it. That's one of the things me and Esri was talking about a while ago. Well. One of the two of us ought to make a kind of a welcoming speech over there tonight. You had, huh? But I'm feared the way he talked, he's going to want to do it himself. Well, Esri's a pretty good out loud talker, all right. <sighs> Gives the same argument about right living every time he gets on his feet. He's give that same talk at Sunday school every Sunday as far back as I can recollect. Well, don't jump on me about it. I never had nothing to do with it. No. Well, it'll work out all right. I just happen to think I might get him to let me introduce him. Uh-oh. Poor Esri. Huh? Nothing. Nothing. Another thing, somebody ought to go by and get Miss Fredericks and take her over there to the sociable tonight. Don't look right for a stranger in town that way to have to walk all the way over there by herself in the dark. Well, ain't somebody going to go by after? Not that I know of. Oh, well, me and Elizabeth can go by for a long. Oh, that's too much out of your way, Abner. Why, we won't mind. Why, Abner, you live over there by the schoolhouse. You'd have to go clean down to Sister Simpson's boarding house and then all the way back over to the schoolhouse. It ought to be somebody that lives over there by the boarding house, and you know it. Well, you don't need to get so mad about it, Long. Ain't nobody lives over there at close. Well, except you and Grandpa Masters. Well, she wouldn't want to go over there with Grandpa Masters. He can't set up that late at his age. Have that ear trumpet stuck right in her face all evening. Yeah. Well, that don't leave nobody but you, does it? Who? You. You live over there, don't you? Oh. Now, Granny, that's right, eh? You had forgot about that, I think. Well, why don't you bring her over there? Oh, I don't know. I hadn't thought nothing about it. I don't know whether she'd want me to go with her or not. Well, why don't you ask her anyway? Here you talking about everybody ought to be nice to her. That's right, ain't it? Well, uh, how, how would you go about it, Abner? Why? Well, just call her up over at Sister Simpson's. School's out by this time. She's more likely there and... Just tell her she want to carry her over to the sociable tonight. Oh, I don't know whether I ought to or not. You know me on the telephone. Why don't you call her? Well, I've got to take Elizabeth, Lom. I mean, uh, ask her to let me take her. Well, I'll be dead blamed. You're the bashfulest one human I've ever seen in my life. Now, if you want to carry her over there, just get up from there and call her yourself. That's a fine way to talk. Fine partner you turned out to be, I must say. After all we went through together, set up with you when you took down sick, and lent you money when you was needing it. Recollect when I when you had the fevers and I come over and I'll set up with you. I'll call her. I'll call her. Well, now don't do it unless you want to. I, I said I'd call her and I'll call her. I wish now I'd have died with them fevers. Throwing it up some ever since he set up with me over there. What's that? I just said. Uh, hello, Sister Simpson. Uh, this is Abner Peabody. Oh, tolerably. Uh, you know about that sociable tonight over at the schoolhouse. Yeah, well, Lom, he wanted to take a... Huh? No, Mom, I mean... Well, yeah, but I... Yes, Mom. I... Yes, Mom. Yeah, well, I... Uh-huh. All right, I'll tell him. Yes, Mom, I'll tell him. All right. Goodbye. Oh, oh, what'd she say? Weren't Miss Fredericks there? You're supposed to be over at 7 o'clock sharp. Oh, well, well, how could Sister Simpson tell you what Miss Fredericks will do? Well, that's a trouble, Mom. She never did give me a chance to tell her. She thinks that you want to take her tonight. 
Sister Simpson? When I alarmed, there weren't nothing I could do about it. Oh, swan to goodness. Well, you know Sister Simpson, when she starts to talk, she won't let you get a word in edgewise. I tried I to... I ought to had more sense than to leave it up to you in the first place. Well, I'm sorry, Lom. I've done the best I know. Hey, if you can't get things in the worst mix-up i ever seen in my life... Well, you're just going to have to call her up and tell her it's a mistake. That's all they are to Oh, me. no, not me. Yes, you, you tell are. Her. God I blame can't. it. You got me into it. Well, she won't listen to me. I tried to tell you her. You was Lom. the one that made the date with her. I can't call her. I, grannies, I'll leave town. That's what I'll do. I'll run away from home. Oh. I wouldn't take her over there. She was the last woman in this world. Here, I've been planning all day how I could get to take Miss Frederick over there, and you've ruined the whole thing uh, in two uh, minutes. That's all rang, I believe. Well, go on and answer it. See how much more trouble you can get into. Hello. Got them down, store. Abner Peabody talking. Oh, hello, Sister Simpson. Sister Simpson. Oh, my goodness. Well, tell her I ain't here. Uh, tell her I just broke my leg. Broke your leg? How? I don't care how. Tell her I fell off the front porch. I don't care. Uh, he said he just fell off the porch and broke his leg, Sister Simpson. In two places. Fell off the porch in two places. Broke my leg, idiot. I done told her that. Mom? Oh, just a minute. Are you suffering, Mom? Of course I am. Of course he is. Uh-huh. Oh, well, that's too bad. Well, that's mighty thoughty of you to call. Yes, Mom. All right, I'll tell him. Goodbye. <laughs> Did you get me out of it all right? Yes, she said it was all right. She couldn't go no way long. Well, good, good. Said a couple of drummers just now called up, and she's going to have to stay there and fix a late supper for him. She just called up to suggest that you take Miss Frederick instead of her. Miss Frederick? And you told her I had a broke leg. Well, you told me to. Well, I'll be dead blamed. But Sister Simpson said she's sorry you couldn't go, Lom, and said as soon as she gets done with the supper dishes, while well, she'll come over to your place and set up with you for a while. <laughs> Granny's Abner, I believe that's our ring. I know it's Lum, I believe you're right. Well, see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Last Friday, when Abner told Sister Simpson that Lum had a broken leg so that he could get out of taking her to a sociable at the schoolhouse... Little did he realize the trouble he was getting Lum into. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner down at their jot em down store discussing the matter. Listen. It's every bit your fault, too. I ought to take one of these crutches and whop you right on top of the head with it. Well, now, don't go laying it on to me. It was your idea, every bit of it. My idea? Yes, sir, your idea. You told me to tell Sister Simpson that your leg was broke so you wouldn't have to take her to that sociable last Friday. I told you to tell Sister Simpson, but I never told you to spread it all over town. You went over there to that sociable and told everybody there that I had a broke leg. Well, folks was asking me why you weren't there long. And then that new school teacher at Miss Fredericks, or whatever her name is. That's right, Miss Fredericks. Yeah, she walked up to me while I was standing there talking to uh, Uncle Henry Launchford, I believe it was, and a bunch of them, and... Said she heard you had a broke leg and want to know how you was getting along. Well, natural, I had to say something to her. Couldn't just stand there. Yeah, well, how did she hear about it? Well, I reckon Sister Simpson told her she boards over there. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? And then that's the reason I rushed on over there to your place Friday night and told you you better get your leg wrapped up with some splints on it because everybody said they's coming over to see you. Well, they sure done it. I think the whole town come over there to play Saturday and Sunday sympathizing with me. Well, you ought to be glad to have so many friends. Oh, yeah, it's awful thought of them to want to help, but it makes me feel ashamed to death to sit there and let them wait on me hand and foot when there ain't a thing in the world wrong with me. No, oh, natural. Feel like I'm cheating. Have to sit there and tell stories about how bad it hurts and make yeah. up stuff. <laughs> Women folks cooking all kinds of vittles for me to eat. Well, natural, huh? They know you ain't got nobody over there to take care of you. Yeah, the Widow Abernathy baked up a cake and brung over to me. Well, well, you're getting something to eat anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm into it now, though. I can't let them know my leg ain't broke after eating all them vittles. No. Especially after eating that big cake. Yeah, yeah, that's where you made your mistake right there. No, the mistake was made whenever you told Sister Simpson I had a broke leg. Well, you told me to tell her that. Hollered to me while I was talking to her on the phone. Said, tell her I got a broke leg. Tell her well, I got a broke leg. Do you leg. have to repeat everything you hear? Worse than some polyparrot. 
Well, I thought I'd done the right thing. I'm sorry. Well, forget about it. It's too late now. What I better be doing is studying up some way out of this. Well, the only thing I know to do is just haul off and tell everybody just a joke. Joke? No, no. Done went too far for that. If I told that Esri Seastrunk and Moe's Moot this is a joke about my leg being broke after letting them pack me out in the front yard Sunday afternoon in that rocking chair and letting them wait on me, they'd beat me to death. Yeah, that's right. That Esri, he ain't got no sense of humor at all. Awful high strong. I know. He'd fight. Oh, yeah. And I wouldn't blame him none, either. No, no. No, we got to think of something else, Edna. Well, let's see. Doggies ought to be some way out of it, surely. Well, we better find something before I go stark raving mad crazy. You've got them bandages on there so tight, it's got the circulation cut off. Well, I don't know nothing about fixing a broke leg long. In order to get Doc Miller to rough it up for you, he can do it right. Yeah, and then he'd find out it ain't broke and tell everybody in town. Uh-oh, yeah, that's right, ain't it? Granny, I might as well have a broke leg as to have to drag myself around with these crutches and my leg all wrapped up. Yeah. At least wouldn't have to tell my friends no stories about it. Well, if it make you feel any better, we might find a way of sure enough breaking it. Got to find some way. Do what? Break it? Yeah, we ought to find some way to do it. You told Sister Simpson that uh, you fell off the porch or had me tell her that. Why don't you just try that? Just Are off... you crazy? You think I'd sure enough break my leg? On a purpose? Well, you wouldn't have to break it much, just a little. Well, ain't no way to break it just a little, though. Well, you said you A broke you feel... leg is a broke leg. I know. Anywhere. Yeah, I know it. I don't know. I'm just trying to help you. Said it'd make you feel better if you had one. Well, it would, but I mean... Well, I mean, I'd just hate to go around telling folks something that ain't the truth. Granny, this ought to be a good lesson to me. This whole trouble is all caused by just telling one little story. Yeah. You oughtn't have told me to say it. Well, the worst part about it is I can't see the new school teacher, Miss Frederick. If it weren't for this, I could be down there every afternoon carrying her books home from school for her. Well, now, you get around on them crutches pretty good, Long. Not to have no more experience than you had. Might be kind of hard for you to carry your books, but, well, you could get a book satchel and throw it over your shoulder, a little red wagon, something, scooter, anything. Well, she wouldn't want somebody tagging along with her with a broke leg. Well, now, you better do something or that Frank Foster's going to beat your time, I'll tell you that. Frank Foster? Oh, yeah. He's been sparking at her ever since she hit town. Said over there and made sheep eyes at her all during a sociable the other night. He did, huh? Yeah. Then carried her over to meet on Sunday. Why, that dead blame snake in the weeds. Looks to me like he's got plenty to do running that filling station over there without wasting his time sparking at some woman that don't care nothing about him. How do you know she don't care nothing about him? Why, did she act like she did? Well, I never noticed particular, but, well, I... Reckon she come over to meeting with him of her own accord. He never had no rope on her, dragging her over there. There's the despisablest one human I ever knowed in my life. I thought you liked her. Him. Frank Foster. Oh, him, oh. Dead blame bully. Takes advantage of a feller laid up with a broke leg to where he can't get out to protect himself. Jumping on a cripple, that's what he's doing. Well, <laughs> you ain't got no broke leg, Long. Don't say that, Abner. Uh huh? You're going to blurt that out one of these days and somebody's in here and file everything. As far as you know, my leg is broke. All right, I won't say it no more then. So the smart aleck Mr. Foster thinks he's going to beat my time, huh? Well, dad blame his ornery hide. I'll take a crutch and mind walk out, him mind right... Mind out, get that crutch back under you. There comes Squire Skimp. Huh? Squire Skimp coming in the door there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come in, Squire. Yeah, hi, Squire. Come on back. Well, good morning, gentlemen, good morning. Drum, what's this I hear about you having an accident? Yeah, uh, broke my leg, Squire. In two places. Hey, Chef Henry. Well, I do know. Well, that's a shame, Lum. Yeah, I hate it the worst way. Well, naturally you would, Lum. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Natural uh, I would. Does it uh, seem to be paining you very much, Lum? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just suffered something wonderful with it. No, oh, too bad. It's too bad. I ain't had an easy minute since it happened. Well, I hate to see you crippled up this way, Lum. But you're a lucky man, I'll say that for you. Lucky? With a broke leg? I don't see how you can figure that. Well, I didn't exactly mean it the way it sounded, Lum. Uh, what I meant was, uh, well, naturally, it's unlucky that you broke your leg, but uh, it's mighty lucky for you that you have that little insurance policy with me. Insurance policy? Why, well, yes, that is the smartest thing that you ever did in your life, Lum. When you let me talk you into buying that accident policy here a while back. I'd forgot all about that. 
Well, broke legs don't count, do they? Why, of course it does. Yes, it does. Any way that you're incapacitated, you get paid for it, Lum. I do, huh? Yes, you do. And like I told you before, and I'll say it again, you won't have one bit of trouble collecting compensation from a reliable company like mine. Collecting what now, Squire? Come over that again. I say, Lum, you won't have any trouble uh, collecting money from a reliable oh, company. Oh, well, like I mine. wouldn't want to charge them nothing for just a little old broke leg. Why, certainly we'll pay you. You've got it coming to you, Lum. No, 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 I, I wouldn't feel right about it, Squire. Appreciate you being so nice to offer it anyway. No, oh, cut, cut, Lum. I tell you, a body just don't know who his friends is till something like this happens to him. Well, now, just a minute, Lum. Do you mean to sit there and say that you don't want to collect what's rightfully coming to you after paying premiums all this time? No, no, sir. It weren't their fault I said that blame clumsy. I don't want some poor insurance company to have to dig down their pockets just because I'm so awkward. Well, Lum, that's, uh, that's what you carry insurance for, to take care of you in a time like this. Well, I'll just quit carrying it then. I'll just drop the policy. Why, Lum? Well, <laughs> this is a new one on me. This is the first time that I've ever run across that attitude. They generally want more than what's coming to them. Yeah, well, just tell them to forget about me. No, 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 I won't do any such thing. As your agent, I'm going to see that you get what's coming to you, Lum. I've got the disability form all filled out here. This oh, my did goodness. I do with that? Uh, yes, yes, here it is, right here. Asking them to mail you a check for $100. Now, all you have to do is sign it right here. $100? I won't take it. Yes, you will now. Now, Lum, as a favor to me, you've got to take it. As a favor to you? Why, yes. On the strength of this settlement, Lum, I'll sell everybody in this town an accident policy. All I'd like to do is to let them call you up and you tell them what a fine policy that it is. And uh, to remind them of it, I'll just say, look at poor old Lum Edwards over there with a broken leg. Now, where would he be today if he wasn't covered by one of my accident policies? Well, Squire, it ain't no use of you talking. I won't sign it. Yes, you will, Lum. I'm determined in this now. If you won't sign it, I'm going to have a doctor examine you. And I'll send in his report. I'll get the money for you. A doctor? Yes, sir. I'll get a doctor. Better sign it, Lum. Yeah. Hand it here, Squire. I'll sign it. Jot down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. In order to avoid taking Sister Simpson to the school social last Friday, Lum pretended to have a broken leg. Abner spread the news of the fake accident to such an extent that Lum has been forced to keep his leg in splints. Yesterday, Squire Skimp climaxed the situation by insisting that Lum put in a claim for disability on his accident insurance policy. Today, as we look at home a little community, we find Lum down at the Jotham Down store. Abner is just entering. Listen. Hey, oh, uh, come in, Abner. Well, I'll be dog. What are you doing down here so early? Well, I couldn't sleep, so I just come on down and opened up the store. Might as well have spent the night down here as for sleeping with. Didn't you sleep good? Never closed the eye all night long. Well, no wonder, Lum. You got to help some, you know. You got to close your eyes. Well, I mean, I never slept none. What's the matter? Was your leg bothering you? My leg? Oh, of course. (laughs) I forgot it ain't sure enough broke. Since you've been wearing them bandages and using them crutches, I forget myself sometimes. Well, you better forget all the time. You're going to let it slip around here one of these days that it ain't broke, and then I am into it, sure enough. I ain't told a soul. That's one reason I couldn't sleep. I got to thinking about that accident policy. If I take that $100 from that insurance company, I'm liable to go to the penitentiary. Do you know that? Penitentiary? Yes, sir. Obtaining money under false pretenses. Defrauding the insurance company is what it is. Why? Because I'm letting them pay me for a broke leg when my leg ain't sure enough broke. Well, that ain't your fault. Squire's the one that's sending the claim. Yeah, but I'll be the one to get the money. I was right here when he made out the claim, and you tried to get him not to send it in. Yeah, I know, I know. I wish I hadn't signed the thing. Yeah, that's where you done wrong. But he said if I didn't sign it, he was going to have a doctor come over here and examine me, and I knowed I couldn't stand for that to happen. Oh, no, they'd have found out then, sure enough. I don't know what to do. 
Well, Granny, if it looks like if it ain't six or one thing, it's a whole dozen and a half or something else. Well, I wouldn't take that money now if you're liable to get sent to the penitentiary over just a hundred dollars. If I was going to run that risk, I'd ask them for about a thousand. Well, I don't want none of their money. I ain't got nothing coming to me. But if I don't take it, I got to admit that my leg ain't broke. Well, I don't know. I believe I'd rather go to the penitentiary for a little while long rather than to tell all these folks around here that it ain't broke after them being so nice to you. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what makes it so hard to tell them the truth. Everybody's sympathizing with me. Coming down to the store this morning, Grandma Masters is out sweeping off her front steps and started sympathizing with me over my leg being broke. And her eyes all puddled up, tears running down her face. Bless her heart. I never felt so guilty in my life, Abner. I wanted to tell her the truth, but I just couldn't. No. Special now that I put in that claim for that insurance. Well, that ain't nothing, old um. Well, I weren't supposed to tell you, but the Ladies' Aid Society is having a food sale next Saturday to raise money towards buying you a wheelchair. Wheelchair? That's what Elizabeth was telling me last night. Well, I don't need no wheelchair. Well, they think you do, though, Lon. This story about your broke leg has been told so many times now. They got it exaggerated to where you wouldn't know it yourself. Yeah, I know they have. Luke Spears said he heard I had both legs broke. Well, Mose Moose stopped me on the way to work just now and said he heard the doctor said you'd never walk again. What doctor? He never said. I ain't been examined by no doctor. No, I just tell you how that story is growing on. Yeah, all because I told one little thing that weren't the truth. Had you tell Sister Simpson my leg was broke just to keep from taking her to the party. I oughtn't have did it. Art not to have did it. Even the school children is helping, Mom. School children? Yeah, they got a coffee can on the teacher's desk down there with a hole cut in the top of it, and a sign there says, Help poor Lum buy a wheelchair. They're all bringing their pennies to school for you. Aye, Granny, that settles it. I'm going to tell the truth. I don't care what happens. Come on, take them bandages off of there, Abner. I can't stand this no longer. Well, what about the penitentiary? You done signed that insurance claim. Oh, my goodness. This is awful. I can stop that wheelchair business, though. Uh, quick as they take up books over there this morning, I want you to go over there and tell the teacher that the doctor just got done examining me again, and I'll be up walking in a day or two. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And then tell Elizabeth the same thing, not to have no food sale. Yeah, not yeah. to have it. I'll tell her. I believe we can head it off all right, Mom. Yeah. you got to help me out of this, Abner. It's just getting worse all the time. I'll help you. Everybody's so nice to me. If they was to find out that this is a fake, if I was to get hurt now, nobody wouldn't pay no attention to me. I'd be like the fellow that hollered wolf once too often. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Uh, oh, I say I'd be like the fellow that hollered wolf too often. Who was that? Oh, I don't know who it was, but he kept hollering wolf, and everybody rushed out to help him keep it from eating up his sheep, and there weren't no wolf there. So finally... What was it? I don't know. Anyway... It might have been a shepherd dog, or a police dog. They look a lot like wolves. No, it weren't no dog. Could it have been a fox? Is that the right answer? There weren't nothing there, Abner. He just oh, kept... too late, honey. Done it, him. If you'll shut up, I'll tell you the story. Go ahead. I was just using that for example. Here, I've been hollering broke leg, and he was hollering wolf. It's the same thing. Oh, that's his, his way of hollering help, huh? No, no. He was just joking. Thought it was funny having all them people running out there looking for a wolf when there wasn't none there. Well, that broke leg must not have been hurting him none long if he could lay there and josh with him that way. He never had no broke leg. Where'd you get that out in your head? You said he did. I said I did. Well, your leg ain't broke. I know that. That's what I say. If I keep saying my leg is broke, when I do break it, nobody won't believe me. Well, you could show it to him. How are you aiming on breaking it? I ain't going to break it. I say if it was broke. Oh. Well, now, what about the wolf? Now, where does that come in? Oh, well, he kept hollering wolf when there weren't no wolf there, and then one day, sure enough, a wolf did come after his sheep, and he hollered wolf, and nobody wouldn't pay no attention to him. Well, just kept calling him till one finally showed up, huh? That puts me in mind of that story about Little Red Riding Hood. She was walking through the woods one day to see her grandma, and she met a I know the story, Abner, and I don't want to hear it again. Well, it couldn't be no worse than that in the earth. What? That was the uninteresting story I ever heard in my life. There was a wolf there in my store. Her grandma was a wolf. She went over to her wait, grandma's wait a minute, house. Wait Squire Skimp. Now, don't be telling no Little Red Riding Hood story while he's in here. He'll think we're both crazy. Well, it's a nice story, Lon. I know it's nice. Don't you know she said, Oh, Grandma, what big ears you got. 
She said, all the better to see you with my daughter. Come in, Squire. Better to hear you with. Well, good morning, good morning. How's the invalid this morning, love? Oh, I ain't much account, Squire. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I got your claim off all right, love. You'll be getting your check here in a few days. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Squire, I've been thinking about that. I don't feel right about taking that money... Couldn't we write them and tell them not to send me no check? No, no, no. They'll be glad to pay it, Lum. They're not going to complain about it. That's what they're in business for. That's what you paid your premiums for. And I don't mind telling you that I've sold three policies already on the strength of this settlement. Well, I'm glad to see somebody's benefiting by it. <laughs> yes, business is good, Lum. Business is good. Uh, what did uh, Doc Miller say about your leg today, Lum? Doc Miller? Yes. He never had nothing to do with it. Well, I naturally suppose that he set your leg. In fact, I put it in the report that he was the attending physician. Uh, who took care of it? Oh, why, uh... Uh, huh? I say, uh, who uh, set your leg for you, Long? Uh... He set it himself. Yeah, yeah, I set it myself. I forgot. <laughs> you mean that you set your own leg? Why, that's the greatest thing I ever heard of, Long. Oh, it weren't so much. The bones was already there. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I'm going to send that in to the National Medical Journal, too. Oh, no, no. Yes, sir. they'll give you a write-up on that. I Why don't you tell no me Oh, now, Lum, you're too modest. That's your trouble. <laughs> you're entirely too modest, Lum, for your own good. Well, now, wait a minute, Squire. I don't want no story wrote about well, it. Well, now, tut, it... tut, now, Lum, this is good publicity for you. And I'll do that this very morning, too. I'll write that up. Oh, wait a minute, Squire. Email. I'll see you later, Oh, uh, Hold on a minute. Too late, Long. He's done went. Now, what have I got into? This thing just keeps getting worse, Abner. Yeah. I can't stand it no longer. Uh, how long is it supposed to take a broke leg to mend? I don't know. At least a week, I reckon. Yeah. Call Doc Miller and find out for sure, Abner. Uh, don't tell him who wants to know, though. No, no. I don't want him over here looking at it. Let's see. Here's that ring. It's a short and a long and a short, ain't it? Yeah. If it don't take more than a week, I'll have these splints off of here by the time that insurance money gets here, and I can turn it down. Just refuse it. Uh, Granny, I know that I'd find some way out of it. Hello, Doc? This is Abner Peabody. <laughs> oh, tolerably well, I reckon. How'd you sell? Well. Well. Oh, she's feeling fine. Fine. Abner, quit telling him about your own ailments and asking him about my leg. Oh, uh, Thanks. Doc. Visit all that How long does it take a broke leg to heal? Morning. Well, average kind. Uh-huh. 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 What? Uh-huh. What? Oh, me and Mom were just arguing about it. Wondered if I ever did get one, how long it'd take to get over it. Thank you, Miss. Here's what I Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you, Doc. But we will. You come. Goodbye. <laughs> How long did he say? Well, he said if it weren't a very bad break... Yeah. ...it oughtn't to take over two months. Two months? You mean I got to go around with these crutches for two whole months? Or maybe three, he said. Mm-hmm.